Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our next example of how to find the area bounded by this polar curve. In this case, we want to find the entire area defined by the equation r equals 2 plus 2 times the cosine of theta. So again, we slice a small little area element, dA, which is that triangular shaped area. So this is 1 half r squared d theta, or 1 half times the function squared d theta. And the limits of integration are going to go from 0 all the way to 2 pi going around. But you've got to be careful because sometimes the function repeats every pi. So how do we know which way it is this time? Well, notice that when the angle is 90 degrees or pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So 2 times 0 is 0, plus 2 puts you right here. So the value over here would be y equals 2, or in this case, r equals 2. And when the angle is 180 degrees, which is uh, pi, the cosine of pi is negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. So after 180 degrees or pi, you come to this point right here. And then this is the second part. You need another pi to come back to the beginning. So indeed, the limits of integration will be from 0 to 2 pi over all the area elements, which are 1 half times the function squared d theta. But because of the symmetry, it may be easier just to integrate over just half the area and then double that. So we can say it's twice the integral from 0 to pi of that same integrand. Now, 2 times 1 half is 1, so that becomes equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the function of theta squared times d theta, and now we can plug in what that function is equal to. So this becomes equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the quantity 2 plus 2 times the cosine of theta squared times d theta. So all we have to do now is simply multiply that out and then integrate each of the terms. So let's do that. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of we have 4 plus twice the product of those two, that would be 8 times the cosine of theta, plus the last term squared, which is 4 times the cosine square of theta, and that would be d theta. So the first two terms are easy to integrate. The problem is that third term, cosine squared, so we need to use the identity that the cosine square of theta can be written as 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of twice the angle. So if we replace that in here, then that can be written as, let's go ahead and do it over here. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to pi. Now notice we still have these two terms. That would be 4 plus 8 times the cosine of theta plus 4 times, 4 times 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of twice the angle, 1 plus the cosine of 2 times the angle. We started with theta, so now it's 2 theta, and the whole thing times, close the parentheses, d theta. Just about running out of room there. Okay, now we can go ahead and simplify that a little bit more. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of 4 plus 8 times the cosine of theta, plus 4 times 1 half, which is 2, times 1, which is 2, so plus 2, plus 2 times the cosine of 2 theta. 2 times the cosine of 2 theta times d theta. And then notice we can combine the 4 and the 2. That becomes 6. We have 8 times the cosine of theta. And 2 times the cosine of 2 theta d theta, which is nice, because we have the cosine of 2 theta, so we needed 2 d theta for the integrand. So we may want to write that separately. So this can then be written as the integral from 0 to pi of 4 plus 2, which is 6, plus 8 times the cosine of theta. We're going to write this as d theta, plus, because I'm separating the integrals here from 0 to pi, of the cosine of 2 theta times 2 d theta. So I took the 2 that was in front and placed it over there. So now I have the proper differential for the cosine of 2 theta. And yes, now I'm ready to integrate. So let's go ahead and integrate this. So this is equal to the integral of 6 d theta is simply 6 times theta plus 8 times the cosine of theta. The derivative of the sine is the cosine. So the integral of cosine is the sine. So this would be 8 times the sine of theta. And then plus the 
sine of 2 theta plus the sine of 2 theta all evaluated from 0 to pi. Now whenever we're dealing with the sine and we're evaluated from 0 to pi, that usually ends up with 0 because the sine of 0 is 0 and the sine of pi or the sine of 2 pi is 0 as well. So these two terms drop out when we evaluate them. The only thing that matters is 6 theta evaluated from 0 to pi. When you plug in the lower limit, you get 0. When you plug in the upper limit, we get pi. That means that the area is equal to 6 times pi. And there we go. That is the area bounded by the function r equals 2 plus 2 times the cosine of theta. So again, polar coordinates in general can be fairly easy. The hardest part often is just finding the integral, the, uh, the limits of integration, I should say. And that's how it's done.